We're back on InfoWars Nightly News, and I'm delighted to be joined by Lloyd Chapman, president and founder of the American Small Business League, to discuss the Obama administration's war on small business, the latest jobs figures, and the collapse in self-employment. And the website is asbl.com. Lloyd, welcome to the show. Good to be here. Good to have you. So we're going to get into the latest jobs figures in a moment, but just encapsulate for the audience how the Obama administration's policy towards small businesses in America uh, has unfolded over the course of the past four or five years in comparison to their treatment of large corporations. Well, I think a good example is the most recent budget he put out. Um, during his 10-minute budget speech, he mentioned jobs 14 times. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, small businesses are responsible for over 90 percent of the net new jobs in America. So he cut the Small Business Administration budget by 12 percent, while he raised the Commerce Department's budget by 34 percent. And the Commerce Department is the federal agency that uh, pushes, you know, Fortune 500 firms. So I think the U.S. Census Bureau data is probably correct. If it's correct, it means that Fortune 500 firms are responsible for less than 10 percent of the jobs. Small business over 90, he cut the small business budget and boosted the uh, big business, you know, Commerce Department budget. And that's that's typical. In fact, you know, when you say Obama's war on small business, a lot of people, you know, don't believe that. And I always say you need to quit looking, uh, listening to what he says and start watching what he does. And uh, today, the, the budget of the Small Business Administration is less than what it was in Ronald Reagan was president. And uh, when you look at Obama's policies, he's had very... Uh, anti-small business policies. And these are just the facts. You can look at the reports like the one you're talking about. And uh, he's he's one of the most anti-small business presidents, you know, that I've ever seen. Now, we've got, we've got the job figures out today. Of course, we know the real unemployment figures never see the light of day because they don't count the people that have actually stopped looking for work. But there's much, you know, hollering and high-fiving over these new numbers today. Government jobs are on the rise, as they have been over the past several months. But, Lloyd, the, the same can't be said for self-employment and small business, can it? No. You know, small businesses have been devastated. And again, you know, I like to just stick to the you know, facts. And, you know, the Citrus Bureau says that small businesses in America are responsible for over half the gross domestic product, over half the private sector workforce, and over 90% of, of all U.S. exporters are, are small businesses, and 98% of all U.S. firms uh, are small businesses. And I believe um, something like 20% uh, of the people in America are self-employed. And uh, they've just, you know, suffered you know, tremendously in the last few years. I believe in, in both uh, TARP and the American Re Reinvestment Recovery Act, the small businesses where most Americans work, where all the jobs are created, got less than 5% of the money, while the big corporations that, you know, uh, are paying, you know, single-digit income tax and are shipping jobs overseas got, I think, about 95% of the money that went to businesses. Now, in terms of these um, government jobs, we had a government unemployment rate of 5.7% in July 2012. That's now come down to 3.3%. So a lot of these new jobs that are being created as the economic recovery is hailed are government jobs. They're not self-employment. They're not small business. So what kind of economy are we going to see develop if more and more people are becoming dependent on government jobs? Uh, it's, it's, you know, it's not looking good. It's very discouraging. And, um, you know, I was watching actually this morning... Um, uh, the guy that founded AOL, forgot his name, uh, talking about, you know, they were talking about immigration laws. And they were saying something like, you know, half of all the Fortune 500 firms were started by immigrants and talking about Silicon Valley here in California, where most of the companies were started by immigrants. And uh, those all started as small businesses. Those are all small businesses. So to have more and more people working for the government and fewer and fewer people being, being self-employed is the opposite of the way you'd want the country to go. And of course, as, as the government grows and more people work for the government, our taxes are going to go up. And the government's control over your life is going to go up. So that's just the opposite of what, of what you would want and where you want the country to go. We need the government to get smaller. We need fewer people to be working for the government and more and more people to be self-employed. 
I mean, and there's this article that's linked on Drudge today, which gets into a lot of stats on this. The percentage of Americans that are self-employed fell by more than 20% between 1991 and 2010. And as a share of the population, the percentage of new entrepreneurs and business owners dropped by a staggering 53% between 1977 and 2010. So why are we seeing this staggering decline in small businesses and self-employed people in America? Well, you use the term war on small business. Uh, and again, that to a lot of people, that might sound kind of you know hard to believe, but it's true. When you just look at the facts, again, I like to just stick to the facts. Um, one of the biggest issues that I talk about all the time is that there's a federal law here in America that says that a minimum of 23% of all the money the government spends should go to small businesses. That's very logical since most Americans work for small businesses. They create 90% of the jobs, half the gross domestic product. That makes sense. But every year for the last 15 years, most of that money that's supposed to go to small businesses has been diverted to Fortune 500 firms. And um, both the House and Senate small business committees uh, are heavily influenced by Fortune 500 firms. So I've seen an, uh, a fairly aggressive campaign on, on the part of big businesses to push what I'll call anti-small business legislation, anti-small business policies. I'll give you a good example. Um, if, if the listeners right now, we ask them, come up with a federal policy that how long should a company be allowed to stay a small business once they're acquired by a Fortune 500 firm? Most people would say, well, immediately, as soon as they're purchased by the large business or within a few weeks or months. The federal government a few years ago had a policy where the large business could buy a small business and keep that status for the purpose of government contracts for 20 years, two decades. That's, that's shocking. Um, today, it's, it's, it's still five years. And uh, when you look at America, again, the Small Business Administration is the only agency in this country to help out the 28 million small businesses where most Americans work, again, where 90% of the jobs are created. And that agency has a, a minuscule budget of around, I think, $750 uh, uh, and now Obama's going to cut that. So just look at the facts, and you'll see that the government adopts has a clear pattern of adopting anti-small business policies, anti-small business legislation, and uh, it's it's you can see it in the economy and these statistics, you know, clearly reflect it. But uh, the Small Business Administration should have a budget that's probably you know twenty-five billion dollars, not the seven hundred and fifty million that they're trying to keep their doors open with. But it's it's very unfortunate. Um, mainstream media won't talk about this. I I was watching uh, CNN today, and if you watch any of the major cable uh, news channels, the ads are all about small businesses. You know, I've, I've heard this one commercial so many times I've got it memorized. I guess I don't have a small business, I've got a fast business. And all the commercials talk about small businesses, but you never hear uh, network news or cable news mention small businesses. It's almost like it's, you know, against their rules or something like that. But no matter what happens to small businesses, they will never mention it. Now, running parallel to this, what we've described as a war on small businesses, is the Obama administration's war on energy independence in America, which seems to be a completely deliberate program to shut down energy independence in America, of course, with Obama threatening bankruptcy to anyone who tries to open a coal-fired plant. Do you think, in regard to small business as well, you know, is this bumbling incompetency, or do we have a deliberate statist agenda to literally wreck the American dream? And why are they so pernicious in their agenda to do that, if that's the case? Well, it's certainly not incompetence. It's, it's certainly by design. Nothing that the government does is through incompetence. It's all done very strategically by very smart people. And, and basically, I think it's the, um, um, the oil and gas industry is pushing that. Uh, they're, they're against you know, anything other than, than you know, gasoline and, and oil. Uh, again, when you and, you, and you don't, you can't get stories about this on the news. Uh, if, if people will watch these cable news channels, you'll notice that the American Petroleum Institute has back-to-back -back ads on all these cable channels all day long. They've got tremendous influence uh, in the mainstream media and in the government. Um, 
Uh, you can go online and look and see that the major oil companies in the last few years have actually paid some of them, like ExxonMobil, zero federal income tax. I think it was 2010, ExxonMobil had record profits and paid zero, not a penny, of federal tax. And that's an example of the kind of clout they've got uh, in government and with the Obama administration. Uh, but it's not, it's not new to the Obama administration. They, they've, you know, they, they've had a lot of power for a long time. But um, so I think when you talk about you know, Obama's policy around, let's say, coal-fired plants or small businesses, you're seeing the voice of big business and big money in our government. Now, the comedian Jay Leno recently joked that if Obama really wanted to close down Guantanamo Bay, he should do what he always does, declare it a small business and tax it out of existence. <laughs> <laughs> And you mentioned the tax previously. We've also got, you know, the likes of Google, Amazon, Starbucks, eBay, Facebook, some of the biggest corporations in the world. They're paying a pittance in taxes while the American middle class small businesses are being told to dig deeper in their pockets. Right. Uh, what does that kind of two tier approach tell us about the economic system that, were, that we're currently living under? I think it tells us that our government's completely and totally corrupt. There's no question about it. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican or Libertarian. You got to realize our government's corrupt. Um, I've been to Washington many times. I've walked the halls of Congress and trying to get legislation passed for small businesses. Uh, it's it's not going to happen. I've got a bill right now in Congress, by the way, called the Fairness and Transparency Contracting Act. Uh, Congressman Hank Johnson from Georgia introduced it, and uh, I'm gonna try to get that bill passed. But that that bill has no chance of passing because it's going to help the middle class and help small businesses and big corporations aren't going to allow that. And, um, but yeah, it's our government's corrupt. It's just unbelievable. And if you go back, um, and look at the quotes of Thomas Jefferson, the founding fathers knew this would happen. You know, they, they knew it. I think Thomas Jefferson said something like that, uh, uh banking institutions are a bigger threat to our liberties than standing armies. Mm -hmm. No, and uh, Eisenhower talked about the uh, the power of the growing military industrial you know complex. He warned about that. So, you know what what people like uh, Eisenhower and and even Thomas Jefferson talked about. We're seeing it today. You know the power of of, of the financial industry, the pharmaceutical industry, the oil and gas industry, the defense industry. Uh, they 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 run our government, and um, it's it's. It's not going to turn out well. It's just not going to turn out well. And um, I think the government knows that, by the way. I'm sure Alex has done this story. In fact, I think I saw him talking about it, about Homeland Security buying 2 billion rounds of hollow point bullets and 7,000 automatic weapons and 2,700 urban assault vehicles, you know, to be used That's here exactly. domestically. And um, so they, they know that, that something's going to happen. They suspect that people are going to get tired of this stuff and—, and uh, start protesting. So I think they're getting ready for it because they know that there's that the people are not going to put up with this stuff, you know, for much longer. They really do seem to be gearing up for some kind of collapse, whether that be widespread or contained. But I mean, a lot of people cite the book, you know, 1984, George Orwell as a kind of warning from history about the police state and Big Brother. There was also a book written 50, 60 years ago called Atlas Shrugged, which is yeah. quite chilling if you read it and compare it to the Obama administration's policy on business uh, in 2013. Do you think they're actually using Atlas Shrugged as a kind of instruction <laughs> manual? Because it's not far off, is it? It, it seems like it, doesn't it? But uh, you know, what, what they're doing, by the way, is they're uh, listening to the corporate lobbyist. You know, the, one of the funniest things that, that I've ever seen was Obama had a jobs council. And again, when you look at the Census Bureau data, Fortune 500 firms have created uh, less than 10 percent of jobs in the last 30 years, and yet his jobs council was all Fortune 500 firms, no small businesses. And the funniest thing was the chair of the jobs council was the president of General Electric, and uh, no company in America has shipped more jobs overseas than General Electric. So no one knows less about how to create jobs in America than General Electric, and that's who Obama put as head of his jobs council. And that's classic, you know, Barack Obama, and a classic Washington, you know, bureaucracy. But I'm sure those large corporations contributed hundreds of millions to his campaign. But uh, oh, precisely, General yeah. Electric, Goldman Sachs, all of them. Well, um, I want 
wanted you... to touch on Obamacare as well. As I understand it, a lot of the big businesses are getting waivers while the small businesses are being forced to labour under these new costs and bureaucracy. Isn't that the case? Yeah, absolutely. In fact, to tell you the truth, they've come out with more and more policies, you know, uh, uh, for small businesses. And the funny thing is, uh, they're considering a small business anyone that has um, less than 50 employees. And yet today, uh, the Obama administration is considering some of the biggest companies on earth, you know, to be small businesses for the purpose of government contracts. So Obama's giving small business contracts to Lockheed, Boeing, Northrop, Raytheon, Rolls Royce, British Aerospace, Finn Mechanica. Big defense contracts in Italy. Roseborn Exports uh, got over 900 million in federal small business contracts a few months ago. That's a Russian owned international arms dealer. Uh, and yet, when it comes to these policies, you know, they're just, they're just uh, uh, stacking up these policies for, for small businesses. And it's uh, it, it literally is it, it's like they're trying to do everything they can to hurt small businesses. And, and the middle class economy and do everything they can to help the big businesses. It's, it's just unbelievable. And of course, if you talk about this, if you try to talk about the mainstream media, you're a conspiracy nut. You know, if you just read the federal investigations about the fact that, uh, you know, the Obama administration is giving small business contracts to Fortune 500 firms, you know, you're a conspiracy nut. And, uh, you know, mainstream media won't, won't talk about it. It's amazing how they apply that pejorative term to absolutely everything. And it's just a, cheap trick to shut down dissent. They do it with every single topic. Just yeah. in closing, tell people about your website and how they can support your organization. Well, my website, ASBL.com. And, uh, you know, again, the federal law says 23% of all government contracts should go to small businesses. And I've been fighting the government for over a decade to simply get them to quit getting small businesses to Fortune 500 firms. I would imagine about 99% of all Americans agree with me. So I think people should call their congressman and tell their congressman to support the Fairness and Transparency and Contracting Act, which will simply stop the government from giving small business contracts to Fortune 500 firms in the U.S. and some of the biggest companies around the world. That'll direct more existing infrastructure spending into the middle class and I think create more jobs than any economic stimulus program that's ever been proposed. It's also free, no new taxes, no new spending. So uh, we're just trying to help out small businesses and help the middle class here. And I'll have to tell you, it's an uphill battle with the Obama administration, with the mainstream media. So uh, we can, we'll appreciate any help people will give us in that. Okay, we're going to leave it there for now. Lloyd Chapman, president and founder of the American Small Business League. Thanks for joining us on InfoWars Nightly News. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Stick around after the break. David Knight in studio interviews the two men arrested for drinking iced tea in a parking lot. Stay tuned.